What we should realize here is that those ideal bond angles aren't the same for every known compound. Here's the thing. We're going to say those ideal bond angles exist only if our central element has no lone pairs. Once our central element starts to get lone pairs, it's going to compress the bond angle. It's going to make it smaller. Here we can see an example. Here we have methane, which is CH4. Its electronic geometry would be AX4. It has no central, it has no electron pairs around it, no lone pairs around the central element. So its ideal bond angle, its perfect bond angle would be 109.5. But if we move over to ammonia and H3, we have our first lone pair involved. Lone pairs want to be as far away as, every, as everyone else. So this is going to push the other bonds away from it. This causes them to compress or get smaller, and that actually makes the bond angle smaller. Water, now we have an additional bond angle getting smaller because now there are two lone pairs pushing away. So what you're supposed to take from this is those ideal bond angles are only if the central element has no lone pairs. Once the central element starts to have lone pairs, the bond's going to get smaller and smaller. Of course, your professor's not going to want you to memorize every single bond angle known to man. All you would have to say is, you don't need to know this exact bond angle. All you need to know is that the electronic geometry is AX4, so technically it's tetrahedral. The ideal bond angle is 109.5, but because that lone pair is there, all you'd have to really say is, you would expect the bond angle to be less than 109.5. And here, since you have two lone pairs, you could say the same exact thing again. Its electronic geometry is still AX4. Ideally, it should be 109.5. But the lone pairs being there make it less than 109.5. This is what your professor would be looking for. And this is what you would have to say.